I am Lonnie Bunch, the director of the National Museum of African American History and Culture, and I'm here on August 23rd, 2016, with Robert F. Smith, and we're going to talk a bit about his involvement in the museum and the Robert F. Smith Center for Family History. So let's begin by basically asking, so why'd you get involved with the museum? That's a great question, because if I didn't, my mother would be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I have the, uh, the, the good fortune, as, as many and all African Americans, of you know, being in this country and hearing stories about who we are, where we came from, what our families were, were, were all about. And you know, those are the stories I grew up with, and those are things that were quite, you know, you go to school, you learn all sorts of things, but those are the stories that were quite intriguing and it mm -hmm. stuck with you for years and years and years. And you know, obviously when I heard about this museum and being in technology, I said, look, I want to really understand if we're approaching this, if you and your team are approaching this truly for the next generation of museum, which is, yeah, there is a building, but the true collection of the building is the stories of the people it represents. Exactly. And to be frank with you, you know, African Americans, I think, are some of the most interesting people on the planet. Uh, we've had some of the most challenging journeys, but we brought so much joy yes. to our day to day. Mm -hmm. And those stories need to be told. And I'm so excited that we now have a place that is the hub of, you know, I'll call it the artifacts, mm -hmm. but also now the tapestry can be told through this place, not only in the place, but other places. So to a great extent, you know, my desire, you know, to, to be a part of this is to really be a part of what is American history, which we are just so in inextricably linked to and woven into every thread of every fabric of what is what makes America great. So this is an exciting time. And I'm so glad that when we got a chance to meet years ago and, and, and hear your vision and hear the vision of the museum, uh, that this is going to really, I think, change the way museums are thought about, how they're accessed, and how they live going forward. They will not be temples. Right. They will be museums, and that's what's exciting about this project. And I think what really excites me about our initial conversations was that we did share that notion that often people forget to humanize history. They right. tell the great stories, right. but they forget to tell the individual stories of right. family and the like. And so I think part of what we hope to do with our collaboration is to make sure that people recognize that their stories are important right. and valid. Yeah. Um, rather they all than, matter. That's exactly. Yeah. You're not Frederick Douglass or Martin Luther King, right. but your story in some ways, as you said, is really at the fiber right. of what is the United States. Absolutely. And we all have a desire to learn more about where we came from, not only as a people of African Americans, but someone who grew up in St. Augustine, Florida, or someone who grew up in Denver, Colorado, mm -hmm. or Cleveland, Ohio, where how did my family get here? And, and you know, I hear these different stories, and where do they fit? in the construct of all the other African-American families and frankly mm -hmm. all the other American families. Right. And what was our role in the development of this community? And often two generations later, those stories are forgotten or, you exactly. know, like I say, they're, they're embellished or, or <laughs> to some right. degree, right. you know. And I think we have the chance to really take stock, you know, with this, with this project, with this collaboration, saying, guess what we're going to do? We're going to first aggregate this information, you know, professionally, mm -hmm. professional curation. Mm -hmm. We're going to train a group of cur curators to actually be effective at going in and, and, and penetrating you know, the, 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 the repositories of our history. Mm -hmm. And then we give the broad community say, listen, I want to contribute. I want to be a part of that, too. I want my family to be a part of that, too. And I want it to all come together so we can actually understand the narrative of our lives exactly. here individually and collectively. So and, as you, and, and as you put your finger on it. We couldn't do this without technology. Right. So maybe if you could talk a little sure. bit about your vision for technology and history, because often when people think of technology, they don't think of the past. Right. Um, right. So, so that's what so excites me about what you want to do. Right. So, you know, there are three phases of the project, as you mm -hmm. know, and I think you know the, the, the key to explain is that we're going to have this professional curation, which really makes up two parts of it. Right. The first phase is, you know, how do we actually use you and your staff to go out and say what are the collections of works mm -hmm. that we can go out there and we can digitize. You know, it can be any form of structured or unstructured data. What do I mean by that? Pictures, video, film, music. And put it in, 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 a, in a metadata and use a metadata format so that it's now searchable. And you can actually search it in context. And you can mm -hmm. search it through relational, uh, through, through relational context. And so what that does is give you a vast connectivity of the history of our people done professionally exactly. mm -hmm. 
-hmm. with professionally trained curators. So that's the next phase. Mm -hmm. We're going to actually train curators. We're going to find these master students, these bachelor students who have an interest in history. How do we take, you know, Lonnie Bunch and say, how do we make 500 of them? Right. And then how do we make 5,000, mm -hmm. right? And get them trained in a way that they now know how to document and to find and to actually unfold those stories and, and, and put them out so they can be used for not only research, but frankly for entertainment. Yep. You know, to a great mm -hmm. extent, understanding mm -hmm. what, what, what drove our joy and our passion in some of the hardest times of any people on this planet, exactly. right? And then lastly, the community curation. And the, the whole idea and concept is ultimately an app. Like when I go to my, you know, my elders, my aunts and, and grandparents and say, oh man, I love, can I take mm -hmm. this photo album home? You know, boy, don't you take that That's out of right. the house. Don't you even you think about it. You can't even think about it. You can't, <laughs> you can't take a picture off the wall. Right. But you can take out a smartphone and if it has the right application, you take a picture of that picture and then you, you ask. And then mm -hmm. now you have a chance to interact mm -hmm. with that elder to hear the stories. And some will be audio and some will be put in. And then that becomes searchable. And so now when you think, of, wow, I didn't realize that my, my, my you know, uncle came from, right. you know, first went from, from Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then came from St. Augustine, Florida. And, and so it's probably about, you know, 1897 when that happened. Mm -hmm. Now you go search. Well, what happened in Florida in 1897? Exactly in St. Augustine. Well, you have the professional curation piece of it. It'll give you a, a narrative. But then you can look at everyone who was in that community that has now contributed, and you'll probably see your relatives in other pictures exactly. or stories told about them. And you'll learn things about your history that you otherwise would never have a chance to capture. And I think it creates, again, that fiber of linkage between the younger generations and the older generations so that they all feel that their relevancy continues to exactly. be enhanced and understood. So exactly. that's the project. Mm -hmm. And the technology, the beautiful thing is we live in an age where all that technology is here, it's now it's commercially available, and it's actually we can distribute it in a way where it can be kept for literally generations and ensure that we can port it to you know new technology mm -hmm. as, it, as it advances. So it becomes living. And as you and I have talked, every African American, anyone who has African Americans in their family right. can now be a part of this museum. And I think that's what's beautiful about what we're doing. Well, I think what excites me, too, is that, you know, just the other day, a woman calls me and says that she was 95 years old and that she knew my grandmother, right? right? Wow. And so yeah. I'd never heard of this woman, right? <laughs> right? And so she said, you know, could you come visit me? And I thought, well, I don't know. And I thought, well, what the heck? So yeah. I went on a Saturday. Right. And this woman, actually, her mother and my grandmother were best friends in North Carolina before they moved north. Right. So this woman you pulls no out idea. a picture of my grandmother from 1910. And you never seen that it. That my grandmother had given this woman when she was leaving North Carolina. I had never seen it. Wow. So I'm sitting there thinking, oh, if I only had the app. You right, know? right, right. Because, because this woman had amazing stories right. and sort of made a connection that I could have never imagined. Right. And right. as you were saying, she talked then about migration. And suddenly right. you realize you're part of this long movement right. of people sort of deciding that it, one place wasn't where they needed to be, exactly. and they had to go and reinvent themselves in right. a new place. And right. so I thought so very much. You point much. that vast migration, but there's one person who affected you. Your exactly. grandma. Had that not happened, your life would be completely different. Exactly. Right? And for this woman then to have this, part of what hit me is, if we can make this accessible so people know that we're doing this, right. then more people will find those photographs Absolutely. that they haven't seen. They will understand Absolutely. that connection. Absolutely. Because I, my biggest worry as a historian is all this gets lost. Right. Because we used to be a community that always had a place to go home. Right. Home might have been North Carolina Absolutely. or Denver or whatever. Absolutely. But now that's now it's the second generation, that's third right. generation. Exactly. That home no longer is there. And right? where is that stuff? And yeah. I think that if we don't capture it in the next decade, right. most of it's going to be exactly gone. Right. So part of what we have to do, which is what we're doing, is we're going to get the Greek letter organizations. Really, I was just going to do my fraternity, but it was a best <laughs> fair. Uh, it isn't, but okay. But what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll get the Greek letter fraternities to now have contests over the summer and say, guess what? You're going to take all your chapters and, 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 and go digitize. Who digitizes the most content mm. uh, across? And so now we have a forcing function that actually creates those bonds within the community, mm -hmm. multiple generations, but also forces that we get a chance to aggregate this, aggregate all this vast body of information and knowledge about who we are. Exactly. And I got to tell you, what's going to be fun about that is as, as we see it grow, when you then start to dig and say, let me find out about my family mm -hmm. a little bit more, but find out about this person, I think we're going to just find out some wonderful things about who we are as a people that have gotten lost in the translation from generation to generation. And I think that's, uh, frankly, I think that's going to be the, the greatest gem that comes out of it. I think the, on top of that, though, is this notion that 
we can help people see the history in new light. Right. You know, we talk about history in the same way, the mm -hmm. same stories, mm -hmm. but suddenly if we're able to do it through these thousands of right. theories that we're going to be able to find, right. suddenly the migration takes on a new tack. Absolutely. Suddenly what work was like on the railroad, mm -hmm. it's different. Right. And so I think for us it really allows us to get a deeply nuanced look at the past. Right. And I think so for yeah, us right. this technology mm -hmm. is really going to make this work. And yeah. I think that your willingness to be part of this is what's so exciting to us. Well, it, the technology in and, in and of its own is not going to be it. We need the expert curators to help us think about, right, and drive mm -hmm. forward how do you take data and information, turn it into knowledge, and to a great extent, what is the fabric of history, right? right? So right. I think that's where the partnership works out quite well. And I think that's where the gift and the grant and what we're going to do is going to work out well. Because I think when you train these curators and they start to engage with the community as well in teaching them, here's the sort of relevant information, here's the, the key words you want to ask people, mm -hmm. here's how, that will give us, I think, the nuances of how it impacted, how migrations and railroads, how that impacted us as a people mm -hmm. through a historian's eyes. Look, we don't all have the wonderful skills that you have as a historian, but here's a way for you to translate those skills into the community in a way that's going to be helpful to us understanding more about ourselves. So that's why I think hey, it's a wonderful exciting. thing. And I got to tell you, I think, Lonnie, as we get this completely right, it's going to change the way museums, at least in America, are viewed and how they then think about their role in society. Mm -hmm. Because in, in some ways, our goal in creating this museum is to say, what is the 21st century museum, right? right? Mm -hmm. That is both a place of tradition, mm -hmm. but also innovation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's so exciting about this. And I think the other thing that makes it really engaging to me is that it's what you said earlier. I'm not sure we need to convince, you know, we need to create a whole new generation of curators, although I'd like to. Mm -hmm. What I want to do is create generations that care about the past, right? right? So Good that point. they're comfortable right. having those conversations mm -hmm. to recognize, instead of what I did when I was a kid, who, want, who cares about those old pictures? Mm -hmm. Suddenly I want people to say, I want to know that story. I want right. to understand who we are as a people. Right. And I think this also then, candidly, really we sh will reshape the way we preserve all history. Because mm -hmm. what's going right. to happen is people are going to see that we're taking the African American experience, suddenly other places are going to say, well, wait right. a minute, wait what a about minute. us? Right. <laughs> exactly. And, exactly. And I think this is going to be transformative. Yeah, uh, there's I mean, no that, question about That's in my what's mind. so exciting yeah, about no it. Yeah, no question about it. You know, I, you know, I'm excited. You know, when I think about, you know, we had stories in my family that passed down from generation to generation and it gave me great pride mm -hmm. in who we were and what we stood for and how we moved forward and have advanced in this country. Uh, and what we stood for and what our values were. And I think part of what this will do is start to really bring forward the values of who we are as African Americans, mm -hmm. and they're beautiful values. And I think sometimes they get lost in the noise of what I call the media flood today. Right. Right. Uh, but I think part of what this will do, Lonnie, honestly, is remind us who we are, what noble people we are, and what it is that we can accomplish and have accomplished in this country and in the world, quite frankly, and actually take pride again in what it is and what our role is going forward. I think that's one of the things that's going to be an outgrowth of this. It's going to be spectacular. I think this younger generation is going to say, wow, I didn't realize that we did all of these things and have done all these things and my family has done all of these things because they get flooded with the day-to-day -day of yeah. it. And the, I call it the short-term messaging of, of what life actually is versus the message of life, what it really is, mm -hmm. which is what we have experienced in our lives, which has given us a chance to become the people we are. So it's yeah. an exciting time well, for that. And I, and I think that, you know, for us to be able to then have the Smith Center for Family History really allows us to do a couple things. It allows us to marry what we've talked about. Mm -hmm. It also allows us to give people access to the Freedmen's Bureau records right. and other things. So right. that, in essence, far too often history is piecemeal. Right. Now, because of this, we're going to be able to give them a full picture exactly of right. this story. Mm -hmm. And I just think that my hope is that it stimulates new generations to care about the past. Mm -hmm. um, it stimulates museums to do work differently and better. Right. But also, it should help people understand how connected their family is to the overall whole. Right. Because that's what's missing, right? Mm -hmm. People don't Agreed. realize that their stories are right. that important. And yeah. so I think this is, as you said, it's more than a technology. Mm -hmm. It's more It's more really than a collaboration. Yeah. It's a possibility to be transformative, Absolutely. to rethink. And, and as my staff knows, I hate to be number two. Yeah, so, I agree with you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> we, have the same, we have the same view in our staff, for sure. For sure. I, I think that's the key. So tell me, as mm -hmm. you think about this collaboration, when all is said and done, 
What do you really want people to have thought about this? What, what, what do you want the, the legacy and the impact of what we're doing to be? Right, I think, Lonnie, the, the most important thing is that we, as a people, understand ourselves. And others have the access and the ability to come in from anywhere. They don't have to be physically in the museum to understand more about who we are as a people and our contributions. You know, our contributions are vast and they are quite valuable in this country. And then, I think, ultimately, what I'd love to see happen is it, A, it becomes the new model for how museums don't become temples, but mm -hmm. are truly living museums, and how every single person in the community says, I'm a part of that. Mm -hmm. And I think that ownership of being a part of it, I think they will cherish again our history and use that to propel us into the future. Mm -hmm. That's how I think as a people. So when I think about where we're going with this, that's what I'm most excited about. And frankly, I'm you know very optimistic we'll get there. Well, I'm not worried about getting there. We'll get there. That's that's the right. key. You know, I, I remember sitting in a board meeting early and doing this project, and there were some ch challenging moments. And one of the board, I think it was Ken Chenault, mm -hmm. said, "Look around this room. We don't fail." Right. And and in a way, right. that's why I feel so comfortable. I mean, you don't fail. I, I don't fail. I agree. And that we think that this is really about the greater good. I mean, it that's is. what really excites me about yeah. it, that it's the greater good. It really is. And, and I'll, I'll tell you, Lonnie, the, when I think about. A, a you know a, a a child sitting in you know a office or not an office but in this classroom in Austin Texas being able to access the richness of their history of African American history for a paper that they may be working on yeah. I think that that will I'm telling you, that's going to blow the minds of of every mm -hmm. kid in the school and the teachers say wow this is how you actually do research right. and this is how you actually tap into the history. Or, 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 you know, the, 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 the information you're looking for regarding some, you know, topic or fact right. or artifact. So I think th it will become what I call that, that hub. Mm -hmm. That everyone mm -hmm. and every researcher and every school kid and every, will, will say this is one of the best repositories, if not the best repository, of American history out there. Mm -hmm. And I think when we accomplish that goal, I think that's going to change the whole perspective again of you know our contributions in America. So I'm quite excited about that. Well, that and also the way you're framing it, I, I hadn't thought about it this way, but it really does help us think about changing the American education system, right? right? Because suddenly you're teaching kids to think for themselves mm -hmm. based on primary documents right. and photographs rather than simply get it interpreted for them. Right. And that's going to be challenging to for teachers, which yeah, is good. Absolutely. And I, that's why I think when, when you when you actually do the curation overlay over what I'll call the data that's into the structured unstructured data and you say, okay, what actually was occurring, you know, in Columbus, Ohio during during nineteen sixty four. Okay, during the beginning of the scene. And they're gonna, you'll, you'll pull a fabric out in that community that maybe a few people know about in that community, but it will, it will basically broaden out and, and create more depth to the stories, our stories, mm -hmm. and frankly, what was actually occurring in the movement at the time. I mean, exactly. those are the things I think that will make for a more fulsome education system and say, you know, not everything that you read is exactly what happened, is what somebody interpreted as happened, but here's all the nuances around the edges that actually occurred, and oh, here's pictures, here's photographs, here's video, here's mm -hmm. audio, here's music. And all those things give you a much fuller picture of what was actually occurring in that community, which gives you a sense for what actually is occurring in that community today. Exactly. Okay, and how that community needs to move forward. So, the, you know, if you think about it, we will have a, I call it an, an in dimensional landscape of history as opposed to a mono dimensional mm -hmm. landscape, which is how you and I basically right. learned initially right. through a series of textbooks. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it wasn't until we learned how to do re research to get a few more dimensions. This has basically infinite dimensions based on who contributes. So the more they contribute, the richer it becomes, mm -hmm. so long as we are thoughtful about how we manage the metadata and actually create searchable terms and searchable ideas and thoughts and relationships and relation-oriented relation, relation -oriented, uh, uh, objectivity in how we do this. So that's, that's what's exciting about it. Let me ask you one final question. Sure. You talked about how hearing stories as a child mm -hmm. inspired you. Has history always been part of your life, or is this something you, you learned early and have come to recently? It, it always has been. You know, I have had the great fortune of having teachers in my family. Mm -hmm. My mother and my father were both elementary school teachers, ultimately became, you know, principals and administrators. And as they told the stories of our family, they told them in a way that, as a teacher would, you know, to help you understand not only what occurred, but the lessons mm -hmm. of what occurred. Mm -hmm. And I've had the good fortune of, of now, you know, building in what, one of my, as you know, my ranch, Lincoln right. Hills, mm -hmm. in Lincoln Hills, Colorado, Colorado, which is the oldest African American resort community mm -hmm. founded by African Americans in 1922. Mm -hmm. And this is a place where we went for peace. It's a place that we went, frankly, to, you know, to, 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 to have fellowship, 
And many of the greatest musicians, African Americans, you know, visited there because they couldn't stay in the hotels mm -hmm. in Denver. They were going from Kansas City to, to Los Angeles. So, you know, Duke you know, Duke Gallington and, and and you know and Count Basie, Zora Neale Hurston used to hold salons there along with Okay, Langston now Hughes, I'm impressed. Right? Zora Neale Hurston? Oh yeah. Right. Okay. So when you hear those stories and now you see this land and you see, and you start to understand it, you say, Wow, these are stories that A not only need to be told, but there was a reason why they gathered there. And there were ideas that came out of that. You know, I always think about the Niagara movement mm -hmm. and how that ultimately led to what you know W. Du Bois mm -hmm. was writing about. Mm -hmm. Those are the stories that, that 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 impacted me and resonated in my life about well, what is my duty, okay, as I move forward in life to make sure that there are more on ramps for Af for and opportunities for African Americans in this country. So those that not only is it in my student of history, I realize the importance of constantly. I'll call it, and not just, oh, and at some point in time, give, you constantly give back and lift all that you can along the way and don't wait till the end because that's what's going to help us as a people and, frankly, as a society to, you know, to progress. Well, I think that we're lucky that you have that vision because in you some thank ways, my mom and dad. Well, you know, <laughs> what I love is we're both a child of teachers. Right. You know, and, mm -hmm. and so it, it is a different, isn't it? It, it really is, is you yeah. know. Um, you learn to grade other people's papers. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and then the tutor for, for money. But yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, that was the only way to make it. That's absolutely. Uh, but I think that what is so important is that we have a chance to do something transformative. Yeah. That's what's really important to me. Right. And I think that your vision for the center um, is it is very much in sync with where we want to go. I think the notion of at the Smithsonian, what's really important is to find the right tension between mm -hmm. tradition and innovation. Yeah. Because you've got to have the traditions because they come to see the right flyer, the Greensboro lunch right. counter. Right. But to be able to then have the right tension to say, okay, here's the foundation. Now we're going in different directions. Right. That's what this project allows us to do and so right. we're unbelievably excited about well, it. Well, so am I. I'm glad that you're my partner on this and I'm glad the Smithsonian is our partner on That's this. That's for so sure. It's quite exciting. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, Appreciate it. Absolutely my pleasure. All right.